Well, welcome back. The final read of fourth quarter GDP just out moments ago, revised lower to show growth of 2.6 percent. Market is rallying this morning up 210 points right now on the Dow Industrials. Joining me right now to talk about the macro story as well as policy, Texas Senator, ranking member of the Senate Commerce, Science and Transportation Committee and Senate Judiciary Committee uh, member Ted Cruz. Senator, it's always a pleasure. Thanks so much for being here this morning. Good morning, Maria. Great to be with you. We were talking about the hearing where you took on Alejandra Mayorkas, and I'm going to get to that in a moment uh, because you really made so many important points there. But first, let me get your take on the economic backstory here. We've got GDP that's showing growth, but there are a lot of expectations that we're going to see a recession later this year. What can you do as a policymaker in terms of an economy weakening before our eyes? Well, listen, I think there's a lot we can and should be doing. If you want to get the economy moving, number one, you've got to get, get, get government spending under control. We've seen in the last two years when Democrats had control of both Congress and the White House, a, a House, a blowout of nearly $7 trillion in spending that is driving the inflation, that is hurting small businesses, is hurting consumers, is hurting families all across this country. We've got to get that under control. We've got to get the nation's deficit and our debt under control. But we also need to have an environment where small businesses can prosper. As you know, my number one priority is jobs, because in the state of Texas, I represent 30 million Texans, and what Texans want, we want more jobs, we want higher wages, we want more opportunity. And the way you get that is you create an environment where small businesses can prosper. You do that through low taxes that are predictable, that are understandable. You do that through reasonable regulations. You know, there's a reason, Maria, that, that more than a thousand people a day are moving to Texas and they have every single day for 10 years now. When I was first elected to the Senate in 2012, Texas had 26 million people. Today we have 30 million people because Texas is where the jobs are. But you look at the national economic scene, as long as the Biden administration keeps pursuing policies that are attacking American energy, that are trying to cut off debt and equity financing for new exploration, as long as they pursue a radical regulatory agenda that is hurting small businesses, we're going to face tough times in yeah. the economy until we change the path we're on. Well, the regulatory environment is certainly important in terms of uh, dictating whether we will see growth or not. You're right. And the Biden administration is saying that they're going to uh, veto the House bill on uh, energy, H.R. 1. So they're sticking to their climate change agenda. And they're also sticking to a wide open border, Senator. Let's talk about these new images that we have from El Paso, Texas. They show over 1,000 migrants. Look at this picture. They surrendered themselves to Border Patrol agents yesterday. 1,000 migrants. I mean, you raised this yesterday, uh, this week, when you grilled Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas at the Senate Judiciary Committee hearing. Here's a bit of that. Let's take a look. What are these wristbands? I don't know what they are. You Senator. don't know what they are. Mr. Secretary, you have just testified to the American people you're incompetent at your job. And if you had integrity, you would resign. And I will tell you, the men and women of the Border Patrol, they've never had a political leader undermine them. They despise you, Mr. Secretary, because you're willing to let children be raped to follow political orders. This is a crisis. It's a disgrace. And you won't even admit this human tragedy is a crisis. What the senator said was revolting. I'm not going to address it. Your refusal to do your job is revolting. <clears throat> Senator, that was so powerful. How is it possible that he doesn't know what those wristbands are? I was at the border five times. I know what yeah. those wristbands are. The drug cartels put those uh, wristbands on migrants. Look, the, the entire hearing was infuriating. Alejandro Mayorkas is deliberately defying federal law. He is causing this crisis at the southern border. He is doing so on political orders from Joe Biden and the Biden White House. And at the hearing before the Senate Judiciary Committee, he refused to answer any question that was asked to him. No matter what you asked him, he wouldn't tell you what time of day it was. No matter what the question was, he would deny it. But what you just played there was the single most astonishing moment of that entire hearing. When, when I showed him the wristbands, and he said he didn't know what they, they were. As you said, just about every illegal immigrant who crosses the border 
has one of those colored wristbands on them. The cartels put them on there. The colors correspond to how many thousands of dollars they owe the cartels. And, and, and look, these are now multi-billion dollar global enterprises that sadly they are tracking human beings like they're tracking cargo. And they send, they send the teenage boys, the Biden administration send the, sends those boys to every city in America. Those boys are working right now for the Mexican drug cartels to pay off their debt. If they don't pay it off, their families will be murdered. And the girls, thousands upon thousands of the girls, are being sold into sex slavery. And the fact that Mayorkas doesn't even know that, as, as you know, you've done this, Maria, if you stand on the banks of the Rio Grande River, in the grass, you'll see hundreds, you'll see thousands of these wristbands. Yes. What that tells me is this guy doesn't give a damn about doing his job. He hadn't gone down to the border to see. He hadn't stood stood on the banks of the Rio Grande. He hadn't talked to his Border Patrol agents. Listen, I, I talk to Border Patrol agents all the time. I go out on midnight patrol with them. The fury these men and women yeah. have at this political leadership, they're risking their lives to keep us safe. and and. Mayorkas and Biden and Harris, they do not care about the human suffering that their policies are producing. Well, this is just so disturbing. And I'm wondering how China fits in here, because is China, you know, supporting these drug cartels the way that China is supporting Russia, the way that China is supporting the drug trade, which is sending fentanyl into our country? Senator, now we have this new information that Brazil and China have struck a deal uh, to ditch the U.S. dollar. They want to trade in their own currencies, a deal will enable the two economies to carry out trade and other financial deals directly, exchanging the Chinese yuan and the Brazilian real instead of converting their currencies to U.S. dollars first. The Atlas organization founder, Jonathan Ward, joined me on this program to talk about this. Here's what he said. Watch this. Yeah, this is also why uh, winning the long game against the CCP is about winning a battle for the global economy. I mean, China's going to take its dominance of international trade. It's been at the top position in goods trades for, for almost uh, 10 years now. Um, and it's going to use that to restructure the financial system over time. I mean, if they're able to conduct their trading relationships, their commodity trading relationships, um, you know, all of that in RMB, and, and we're seeing that some countries are willing to do that, um, that's definitely going to have a negative effect on the U.S. position. And we're not playing the trade game to win. So, Senator, little by little, we are getting the Chinese Communist Party further entrenched in the economy in their goal to overtake the United States as the number one superpower. Now we're yeah. worried about the dollar losing its number one status as the global currency of the world. And there's a scoop from Politico this morning. Daniel Lippman is tweeting that the White House senior advisor, Anita Dunn, urged outside Democrat surrogates to use TikTok to promote Biden's State of the Union address, right as her old firm, which is SKDK, where she was a founding partner, was is getting hired by TikTok to help prevent a ban by the Biden administration and Congress. So what is going on here? They say they're going to do one thing, but are they actually enabling communist China to overtake the United States? Tragically, the answer to that is yes. Everything you just said there is right. And, and what is happening, this is all the fault of Joe Biden and the Biden White House. And there are two things that are interrelated that are happening there. Number one, as a matter of Biden foreign policy, we've seen two and a half years of undermining our friends and allies. Brazil, Brazil, we had in Bolsonaro, a leader of the largest country in Latin America who wanted to be friends with America, who was embracing America. And what did Biden do? He came in and he undermined Bolsonaro, he tore him down because he, he didn't like him because Bolsonaro was friendly with Trump. And what did he do? Biden helped bring Lula, a left-wing Marxist who hate, hates America, back in control of Brazil. The same thing happened in Colombia. The same thing Biden right now is trying to do the same thing in Israel. He's trying to do everything he can to topple Benjamin Netanyahu. He's undermining all of our enemies, and he's trying to drive nations to leftists, which is what has happened in Brazil, is what's happened in Colombia. Joe Biden has been great for enemies of America. And then you put China in particular. China is waging a thousand-year war against yeah. the United States. They want economic dominance. Yeah. They want military dominance. They want global dominance. At the southern border, Chinese fentanyl is being yeah. sent to the cartels. We had 100,000 overdoses last year, the most in history. Yeah. China systematically waging this war. And I'll tell you, the Biden White House and the Democrat Party 
is structurally pro-China because all of their major supporters are in bed with China. Yeah. Meanwhile, they're sending IRS agents to intimidate journalists. Senator, it's good to see you. Ted Cruz joining us. And that'll do it for us for this morning. We'll see you again tomorrow. Morning and Company begins right after